Next, the battle of the, the slightly bigger reds, Cabernet Sauvignons. And um, in France, um, the home of Cabernet Sauvignon is, is Bordeaux, as you might know, and it, particularly on the left bank. So uh, you've got the river, uh, the, the Dordogne here, where the Gironde, which splits in the Dordogne, which runs in between. Um, and on the left-hand side, you have more gravelly soils, the left-hand side as we look at the map. And here, this is what's known for growing really good Cabernet Sauvignon. So the main three grapes in Bordeaux, Cabernet Franc, uh, this uh, actually ripens the earliest. And then we have got Merlot, which ripens next. And finally, Cabernet Sauvignon ripens last. So most winemakers in Bordeaux will grow all three. And it'll depend on the year because you have a specific vintage variation here in this maritime climate and you might not ripen all of them. So that's why the blend you'll often see is different year on year with the same house in Bordeaux. Here this year, 27% uh, uh, Merlots in the blend as well as, of course, 73% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon for the um, Vivens from Dufour Vivens. This is actually their second wine. There was an 1855 classification of Bordeaux, and this is really important. It's still how uh, well quality-wise the wines are regarded in Bordeaux. So this is a second crew class. So that's a really good quality wine. This is the second wine from that winemaker, though. It's not their top wine, um, because that would, yeah, cost a lot more than probably in this entire tasting. Um, but hopefully this should be really nice. I haven't tried it before. 15's a great vintage, nine out of 10. So yeah, it should, should be drinking quite nicely. Now, the second wines are often made to be drunk a little bit younger uh, too. So five years, six years age, that sounds about right to me. Should be in a good place. Uh, the Balneves, uh, so, a wonderful little region in, in Australia. It's my favorite in Australia. I know you can get really good Cabernets in Kunawara, some other, uh, sorry, uh, Margo River, but we've gone to Kunawara here, and this is in South Australia. You get a particular character which gives this wine away. It should make this uh, blind tasting quite easy, perhaps. Uh, mint and eucalyptus flavors. And when you put your nose in good Kunawara or Kunawara that's very uh, distinctive, you, you'll smell this straight away. And you do get the herbal edge as well uh, in French Cabernets, but it tends to be more like green bell pepper. This is the classic taste note here. Also in both wines, we're probably gonna look at flavors of cassis, uh, perhaps some licorice, particularly um, in the Kunawara, I'd imagine for licorice flavors. The tally here, uh, the wines made by Doug Balnaves, who set up the winery originally, and he was a shepherd amongst uh, his, uh, his other pursuits. And in Australia, uh, they actually count uh, their, their sheep and they call this the, the tally over every two hours. And that's why he named his top wine here uh, the tally. And it's 2012 vintage, so nice little bit of age. And it's meant to be a superb year, 2012 in Kunawara, uh, particularly age worthy wines. And that's one of the reasons that he's used this for the tally. So we're gonna taste the two Cabernets next. Really excited about this one. I hope you are at home too and you've enjoyed the wines so far. You might notice there's a slight defect on the bottle here which came in from the wine supplier. So we will send you out, of course, the picture of the, the bottles uh, in perfect condition on the fact sheet which will come with your wines, which you already have. So let's go into the tasting. Uh, Margot, uh, Margot is renowned as one of the, the best quality um, uh, appellations on this side in the left bank. Now the best producer of it is Chateau Margot, which I mentioned earlier. Um, these are some of the, you know, the finest wines in the world. Um, but still, every wine from the Margot appellation is regarded as really stunning. So I'm gonna taste wine A first. I don't know which one this is again. Sophie's set these up for me to make it particularly difficult, playing lots of mind games. So we'll see if we can work this one out. Okay, quite, quite a subtle nose actually. It's smoky, um, there's oak aging in the wine here, um, but it, I think 20% uh, new oak and 50% uh, new oak in the Australian. So I'm expecting more oak in the Australian wine. So I don't, I don't know which one this is, there's a nice bit of oak. I'm getting some of that ca cassis, I'm getting some of that licorice chocolate here and a bit of mocha sort of flavor. Oh, it's, it's lovely. Um, you, when you taste a really great wine, I think, um, you, you feel it on your palate, and then you get a wave. Yeah, and it's almost like you've taken another sip, but it comes back at you, the flavor profile, in terms of tannin, uh, body, flavors. This wine really has it. You get a couple of waves, and it just makes it a really great experience on the palate. Um, really nicely made wine, I think. Um, really, it's got to, got to be from a good winemaker. It's, it's fruity. 
but there's certainly a lovely balance between the savory flavors and the fruit that really go into each other nicely. I'm getting a little bit of this cedary type of flavor, and this is classic in, in Bordeaux, where you get this sort of woody cedar quality. Like, yeah, quite, quite interesting. I'm gonna move on to, to wine B. And immediately, I, I'm thinking this is perhaps the wine from Australia, from Balnais, because, I mean, it's so distinctive, mint and eucalyptus here. Wow, again, uh, I'm getting that wonderful wave of flavor. Slightly more tan in here, uh, in, in the wine on the left. Um, a lot more concentration. It's, uh, the body's a little bit thicker, a little bit deeper. Um, and then now I'm getting that licorice coming back to me. Um, the fruit flavors are coming back. Yeah, a lot of length of flavor in this wine. Re really interesting. Com two completely different styles of Cabernet. Uh, yeah, I know which way I'd, I'd be leaning for the two. Um, I really like both of them for both for different reasons. So the, the cheese I picked today to go, the, the Cabernets is um, from the Basque country, from the Spanish side, uh, Picos Blue. Interestingly, Picos Blue is really distinctive cheese. They use goats, cows, and use milk sometimes too to, to, to make the blend of uh, milk into the cheese. It's, I've, I've had it a few times before, not for a while, but um, it is really strong in the blue flavor, quite salty. Perhaps, perhaps that saltiness is gonna be a bit too much for, for these Cabernets. Um, we might need something a little bit sweeter um, to, to make a perfect pairing, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Oh yeah, it's lovely. Texture, really good texture. I think the blend of all those um, different milks into it produces something really interesting. It's got that chalkiness of the, the goats and the ewes, but the depth and creaminess of the cows. With wine A, it's, um, it's, the wine becomes really, really soft and gentle. I mean, before this was, this was quite a big wine. This was a bit of a beast, but yeah, it's really softened the wine down. Um, but then you do just get this kind of peak of salty spiciness where the cheese is a bit too much for the wine, but quite an interesting pairing. I'll give that a 70% actually. So again, always, Try to wine after the cheese, the wine is the volatile element. In wine B, I'm not getting quite as much of that spice from the cheese. Um, the wine's been softened, but the wine was a little bit bigger before anyway. Um, the, wine, the wine tastes really juicy now, and those tannins, what happens is it, on your palate, the tannins, the, the compounds in the wine that give it structure in red wine, that come from the skins and the pips of the grapes, they just cling on to the cheese texture, and it brings it out, so you don't get too much tannin, seems a little bit softer. That's a nice combination, um, really juicy, fruity afterwards. I'm gonna give that 72%, so a little bit of a better pairing on uh, wine B. So yeah, two, two really delicious Cabernets, um, both, both for different reasons as well. It's been really great to, to taste these wines alongside each other and the experience the different styles and what can be done with different grape varieties and the difference between regions. Beautiful on my right hand side. I mean, I've got a feeling that's, that's the Margot, just because it's a little bit um, more delicately poised and balanced. It's still got depth. It's got cedarwood, cassis, a really, really nice wine. I mean, 7.6%, I think I'm gonna give that one. And uh, from wine number B, I think this has got the classic mint, the eucalyptus. And for me, that really uh, ticks all the boxes. You've got licorice, but also I haven't tasted this wine at all from Balnais before. And the complexity it's gained while aging is really interesting. And obviously 2012 vintage was exceptional. You can taste that in the wine. I mean, if I'm right, I mean, I'm <laughs> quite embarrassed again if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I think this, um, I'm gonna score a little bit higher, 7.8, really nice wine. Enjoyed that a lot. And uh, next up will be um, revealing which one was which.